Jumbi the different kookaburra. The Joneses family cookers are having breakfast by the creek. Mum Jacinta's feeding Jumbi with a bardi from her beak. A bardi. Do you know what a bardi is? No. A bardi is a witchetty grub. Do you know what a witchetty grub is? No. It's the worm. It's a worm, it is. Let's have a look at some worms. Let's pretend these are worms. Imagine this is <laughs> a witchetty grub. Have a feel. Don't eat it. Let's feel it. <laughs> what do you think they'd be like to eat? Squishy. A real witchetty grub. Do you think they'd be nice? Yeah. yeah. What do you think they might taste like? I listen to them. Dad Bruce and daughter Pretty are tucking right into their worms, while brother Reuben accuses mum of putting Jumpy before him. Reuben, won't you learn? Says mum, you know Jumpy's very fussy. We have to give him the bodies this way or he could get very testy. The Joneses went to footy and watched Reuben kick a goal. Have you ever played footy before? No. You haven't played footy? Well, this is what they use. Feel, pass it along. Have a feel of the football. That's what they're playing at footy. Bruce and Jacinta cheered like it was a rumba team of old. Oh, can you hear the cheering? All the cheers hurt Jumbie's ears and made him feel distress. It changed his mood, his happy smile and the superhero cape. When Sister Pretty took pity on Jumbie's aching head of woe and she lent her pinky headphones to him which made the throbbing go. Sometimes does the noise get too loud for you? Yes. Just like Jumbie. And his sister gave him some headphones to put on his ears and it blocks out all the noise. Put them on. See if it blocks out all the noise for you. Uh, are they going to hear? Can you hear anything? It's all blocked out. Let your friends have a turn. We're going to listen to some cheering now. I can't hear you. We're gonna hear it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jacinta laid four baby eggs in a lovely, soft, warm nest. Eggs. Have you ever seen any kookaburra eggs before? You it's have to be really them. gentle. Let's have a touch. Oh, don't throw them on the floor. You need to be gentle. Put them in your hands. Alright. Pass them to your friend. Let me hear. They're like pretend ones. Pass them on. She's also packed her bags to holiday in Gold Coast with her friends. She's gone to the Gold Coast. Bruce is going out hunting to Kayla's with his mates. Pretty, you keep an eye on Jumby so he doesn't stay up too late. Reuben says, but Dad, don't the eggs have to be kept warm? Yes, Reuben, they do. So you'll need to sit on them till morn. Dada Bruce has returned back home with four big bonga moths for dinner. And Reuben's eyes pop wide with, oh my gosh, Dad, you're a winner. Pretty too thinks bongas are yummy, like pudding on Christmas Day. But Jumby thinks they're yucky. Bruce says, Jumby, now don't spit the dummy on bongas before you try them. Moths can taste average until you spend a packet on buying them. Pop Ganka and Jumbi practice their didgeridoos at Moira Lakes. Can you hear the didgeridoos? Jumba's circular breathing makes the bubbles rise like a snake. Hurdle the turtle loves the sound of the didge's musical rhyme, so he's whacking his flippers together like the clap sticks of old time. And Mad Murray the cod had risen up like a ghost coming from the deep. He's singing along to Jumba's Didge like a band member from up the street. Now the eggs just hatched, four little chicks with cracked shells on their heads when Reuben, Pretty, Pop and Auntie sang and smiled them off to bed. Jumbie's in the corner again but this time he's turned around to see his little sister squawk so cutely without a sound. Jumby loves them dearly, but he finds it difficult to show. His feelings and emotions rising up from down below. Jacinta's relaxing on the Gold Coast beach with a cool drink in her hand. Oh, the Gold Coast. Have you ever been to the Gold Coast? No. 
There's a beach, some sand and some shells. I need to the beach. I'm going to pass you the water around. It's, it's nice and cool at the beach. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! My Have you ever found some shells? Yes, I can. I can wipe it off. I can wipe it off. I'm going to pass the shells around and these shells, I want you to feel them. There'll be some rough parts and some smooth, then I want you to rise them to your ears. Have a listen. Feel them. Feel the shells. Some parts are smooth and some parts are rough. Oh. Bruce calls up. Dear Jacinta, my darling wife, I hope you're free. You're not going to believe this, but today our babies hatched at three. Hatched, Jacinta cried. It's impossible. They've arrived so early, but I mustn't diddle-daddle. Diddle I'll fly back with the girlies. It was Reuben's turn to mind the chicks, but he skipped out for footy practice. And Pretty joined her girlfriends to apply mascara with praying mantis. Dada Bruce had gone out hunting again to feed his growing tribe, leaving Jumby to stand guard by his little sister's side. Lucky Jumby had a sense of smell like the chefs from Italy, because the, he smelt something really rotten, rising right up his gum tree. Have you ever smelt something that didn't smell right? No. Think there was a, not a nice smell? Something rotten. Can you think of something that may smell rotten? Um, rotten eggs. Jumby free fell down the tree towards Stanley's scaly face, just like this. Woo. Did you see how high he was? And he swooped right down. Let's have a turn. Put him right up high. Put Jumpy up high and bring him right down low. <laughs> Pass him on to your friend. Have you ever heard a kookaburra before? I heard it. And Stan the Goanna wondered how he could survive this flying ace. Jumpy has it upon an idea, a terror for the moment. A shock to dislodge the goanna's gangling grip on his t tree home. And squawk! Jumby bellowed like a thunder from on high. And Stan fell off like he'd been stuck, struck by lightning from the sky. Down Stan fell like lead into the ground. His head drove down into the earth like a stake without a sound. Jumby touched Stan on the tummy. I wonder what it feel like to have a kookaburra touch you on the tummy. Hurt. He punched. Do you think it would hurt? Oh, bleed. Let's have a feel of some feathers from a kookaburra. Mm. That's what it would feel like. I'm a two. It feels, what is it, does it feel rough? Does it feel, soft. it feels soft. And it was <laughs> hey, Do you think it might have tickled him? Jumby touched Dan on the tummy to see if he was breathing. And then suddenly, Stan flipped back on his feet and he was sneezing. Achoo! Stan sneezed, my boss is full of dust. Have you ever had something in your nose that made you sneeze? I'm, I'm out of here right now. I'll keep running till I'm bust. Mum says, Jumby, you hero. You've squawked and squawked and dived. I heard you fell on the goanna like an angry wasp from a hive. Bruce says, son, I can't thank you enough for saving my little chicklings. I shudder to think of what could have happened without you fa your fancy squeal thing. It's all right, mum and dad. I'll do it again to protect my sisters. And Stan better stay right away or else next time I'll fix him. It was a splendid day to watch the footy and Reuben kick a goal. The Rumba fans and Reuben's family cheered hard against the cold. People. Mum and Dad went up again and jumped right out of their seats. While Pretty, in her pink headphones, just smiled along to Beats. And Jumby on the bonnet with blue headphones from Mum and Dad. A thank you for saving the little chicks. The best Saturday he'd ever had.